Today we're going to talk about what we want and don't want in the garden. So we're yep. going to cover the topic of pests. Yes. We're going to talk a little bit about slugs, Critters. cabbage moths, squirrels. And your garden isn't alive if something's not eating it. Okay, I love green beans. I grow green beans. I grow French beans, actually. They are easy to grow. Um, they produce a lot. You want to you wanna grow them in rotation. So you would grow, put maybe like 10 seeds down and then a week later another 10 so that you're constantly mm. harvesting. Succession, Succession growing. Succession growing, thank you. Um, yeah, I love growing French beans and I grow a ton of herbs because mm. for me as a florist, I use them all the time as foliage as well. Which is so cool. Which And then everything smells like the mix of peonies and mint mm. in June was amazing. Wow. So yeah, that's that's those are my go-tos. I don't think I have any veggies this year except for green beans. Right. Because I just come to your garden. Right. Just take snap your veggies. My garden. <laughs> oh, this is a really hard question oh, for me. This is a biggie to start <clears throat> for jazz. It's a big yeah, one. Yeah, this is a really big first question. My favorite vegetable to grow, I cannot name just one, but right off the top of my head, tomato. Because different varieties, there are so many different varieties, there are so many that you can't get at a grocery store. Yeah. So I love growing tomatoes and peppers from seed. Yeah. My absolute favorite. I really love growing hot peppers. I love growing hot peppers because I find that I actually utilize my harvest the best with the hot peppers. I make like a fermented hot sauce at the end of the year that lasts me the whole oh, that's winter. That's so smart, yeah. So. Can I make like a green bean sauce? You could pickle them. You could do pickled green beans. No, I think I'll just eat them. Okay. But continue. Or stir fry. Yes. I mean, like I can't. I mean, I guess with basil, I grow. I grow a lot of different types of basil. I could make cool pestos. Yes, pesto is a good one. And you can can tomatoes. Like you can save so much of. So the tomatoes, I usually you and you can freeze whole tomatoes, like yeah. big heirloom tomatoes. I like to do a lot of slicing tomatoes, which I just eat all summer on mm -hmm. toast. Oh, with salt, so good. Sea salt <gasps> and, and pepper. bacon. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> not Everyone. growing in our garden. Bacon not growing in our garden. There's other One day. I really, really, really like to grow. Um, like I really like growing eggplants, but I just find I don't utilize it as well as I do my. Well, I like growing everything. I know. I can't answer this question. I've never been able to grow cucumbers, and I I've understood that they're easy. They can oh, be they're really not. Finicky. Okay, because I I mean. I think I'm pretty good at growing stuff, and I cannot grow com computer. Computer. <laughs> <laughs> I need uh, another coffee. I can't grow a MacBook Pro <laughs> or a computer. I just said it again. A cucumber. What is wrong with me? For the record, computers are really hard to grow. They're so but, hard. But if so, you grow it from an apple, so though. Are Oh, good one. <laughs> it was bad. It was a bad one. <laughs> okay, computers are really hard to grow, but so are cucumbers. Cucumbers. Cucumbers okay. can be really finicky. If a cucumber is really, really happy, they can produce like crazy. But good. in my garden, yeah. I try year after year. I get a small harvest, mm -hmm. but they never really take off. They need a lot of water. Mm -hmm. They attract quite a bit of pests. Okay. Um, and so I try every year. You want to trellis them so yeah. they um, have good airflow, so they're not. You can sprawl them on the ground, but most things are soil-borne disease, yeah. like the water splashing up on the leaves. So you want to trellis them, and then just cross your fingers. Yeah. Sometimes they yeah, do I well, gave and sometimes they don't. I'm just gonna take yours. I think I love growing sweet peas the most. Sweet pea flowers from seed because on one hand, they're Easy, they're pretty easy to grow, um, so it's gratifying. You're not like waiting for something forever to take. Like it's gratifying, um, but also I love that sweet peas are back in fashion. I was a history major and I focused so much so on was the. I. We have way too much in common, except I don't like vegetables. I do, I do. I just prefer pizza. So. I like pizza too. <laughs> so I was obsessed. I did a lot of research in, um, in the Victorian era. I focused a lot of my studies in and around that time period and was amazed at like how, how famous and how important sweet peas were to their culture and to advertising and to 
Um, everyone grew them. They're like known as the Victorian era flower. And they've definitely come back in popularity, yeah. which is really cool. Um, they're so beautiful. The colors, they're like little tiny watercolor paintings. Mm. Each little leaf, there's so many var varieties that you can get. Um, and they smell unbelievable. So it's good. one of my favorite scents in the garden, I think is sweet peas. Yeah. Um, they don't take a lot of space. They, they need to trellis, they need to climb. I think that's my favorite. So tell the community where you grow your sweet peas. So they need full sun and there's a hideous like metal fence. Just in like between, this one. Like a chain link fence, but like, like from the 60s. So like rusted. And I put them in like maybe this much depth. There's like about this much depth along where the fence post goes in because my front is all patio stone. So all the flowers I grow in my front are in pots also. But there's a bit of land. I dig a trench, I fill it with manure, and then and then I put the seedlings in. And I also succession sow. This is the first year I've done mm. that. I've started them inside, I've put the seedlings in, and then I just have way too many seeds, always, because I try to yes. grow like 10 of each. Yes. Uh, and then I put more in. Okay, so my sweet peas this year. It's yes. the first year I've been growing sweet peas. I did it two different ways. Yeah. So I grew some inside okay. and I direct sowed. So I directly put the seed into the ground. Yes. My inside ones didn't take super well. Interesting. My direct sowed ones did. Okay. However, because you can plant them so soon in the season, they're one of the first things you can plant. They yeah. like a little bit of cool yeah. temps. The squirrels got to them a bit. So they dug up and seeds. scattered my seeds a little okay, bit. So you know what my number one thing is for that? Squirrels and pests hate a mix, the mixture of blood and bone meal, which is a fertilizer. It smells, <clears throat> but like if you can get a granular mixture of blood and bone meal, sprinkle it on your garden and then water. Okay. They hate it. Okay. They don't dig it up. So when I plant, like I plant a ton of bulbs in the spring and then I pull them out yep. and use that same bed for other flowers. But they'll dig those out and eat them. So you have to sprinkle. I wait till the very last day. Like I've planted in December. We're six, zone six. That's pretty late to plant yeah, bulbs. But I have right before our first frost. Um, they won't touch it. Squirrels love and also are weirdly aware of when soil's been turned. So anytime you plant something, they'll be able to tell that the soil's been touched. Mm. And they'll want to get in there, they'll want to see what you've planted. Mm. So do that, and anytime it rains, or it's been a week, mm -hmm. and it's been a really rainy, sprinkle it again, okay. and they won't touch it. Okay. I also, with some of my seedlings that are kind of precious to me, like I really like to grow sunflowers from seed, Yeah. I just take like a mesh cover, actually yeah. there's something just there. Yeah. And I, this is from like my drain pipe. Yeah. And I just cover, I lay that right over top and it's kind of nice. It has like a natural curl to it. I just will put that over top of yeah. seeds while they're sprouting and nobody's going to get in yeah. there. You know what I've seen too is like you don't have to spend a lot of money, but you know those like mesh things that you would put over a cake or something outdoors if you're having a picnic? Yeah. Like you can get them from Ikea. Yeah, yeah. And they come yeah. in smaller sizes if you're like a and a garden center, um, but even like those over top of young seedlings, because you're going to get the sun and the air and the water in, but pests aren't going to get in. Yeah. Pests meaning like squirrels. Yeah, this is my theory. I grow enough to give a small offering. Okay, what drives me smart. nuts is the one bite wonder. They'll take one bite of one of my juicy tomatoes yeah. that basically I've been growing from seed in my house from February. Yeah. It's September. I'm just about to go pick it and they take one bite and drop it. Yeah. Thinking the next tomato will taste better or different, take one bite of that, drop it. That's when I have to talk with them about it. This is something that is actually what drives me nuts is when people use paprika or cayenne around their soil. The first time you ever see a little squirrel rubbing its eyes, you will never do it again. Like there's no point. The best way to keep things out is to physically cover with netting. And even then, you don't want birds to get stuck. Physically cover it or plant a lot. It's yeah. your, we're in their world. 
Honestly, like the blood and bone meal has been the best thing for yep. me. Because then also like think of how much time you spend planting all these bulbs for somebody to have like half dug them all up. Um, I love growing from seed in my garden zinnia and sunflower. Okay. Um, all different varieties. I find they're just really low maintenance. Yeah, and they are. In the vegetable garden, I love to have all the pollinators around. Yeah. They help with um, everything. We need all the pollinators. Yeah, I think that's a really big thing is that um, we need to, I think everyone by now is kind of aware of how, um, how much we need to do some work on our own to make sure that we keep the bees around and the pollinators around. And there's some really great things that are easy to grow, like those two. Um, anything, I always say, any any flower that has like a tiny little center that looks a bit furry, like a zinnia or a mm. sunflower or a cosmo, anything that's like an easy way to say, oh, that would be a good pollinator because mm. you can see the pollen right there mm -hmm. growing in the center. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of other flowers that are great um, that the bees love. But that's a really easy rule of thumb. That's interesting. Yeah. That's sort of the way I look at it for when people aren't sure what to grow. And the butterflies go crazy oh my for gosh, my zinnias. The butterflies are the, I, yeah, they love cosmos too. Okay, this is such a good question. I don't know the answer to that. So. Because I hate zucchini. There is a natural, you hate zucchini? Sorry to interrupt. I don't like it. I like the breaded zucchini get, that you get like at a pub that don't taste like zucchini. So one, this is a kind of, okay, well, we will answer this question, but I also say I grow zucchini in the garden for the blossoms. Because oh, sometimes, I've the, heard they're good. sometimes my zucchini does not do super well in my garden. And I love eating those blossoms. I stuff them and I deep fry them. Or I put I've them on homemade pizza or in like homemade quesadillas. They're so, so, so good. I stuff them with like a little bit of ricotta or goat cheese. Okay, you're gonna make mint, that for me next honey. time. Honey, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so there is two differences. So there is a big difference between powdery mildew and just natural discoloration of squash leaves, zucchini leaves. The best way to tell is the discoloration, and we'll put a picture up of what's natural. Is it looks like it's mirrored. So it looks like a natural pattern is going through the natural stem of the... Oh, okay, yeah. And powdery mildew looks splotchy. patchy and splotchy and sporadic, like you, you would know. Powdery mildew is kind of tough. It's an airborne disease yeah. um, that really, once you get some of it, can really take over your garden quite yeah. quickly. Um, Powdery mildew for me personally usually happens very late in the season. Me too. So I tend not to do too, too much about it. Yeah. But I have, if I have it early in the season, I can take like a little bit of a milk product and rub oh. it on the leaf and it can help stop spread. But... The biggest thing I would say um, is not to get it in the first place by not over what not over top watering, and I think that's what people do is they water their garden. The plants themselves don't need to be watered, like the actual plant. This you is need a to great water, tip. You need to water into the roots, and um, I think that I was away for a little bit and. Um, somebody had watered and I'm fairly certain they watered incorrectly. They watered over top of everything. Yes. Because later in the season, all of the cosmos got powdery mildew and it spread throughout the cosmos and almost every single one of my rose bushes had black spot. Which is really, again, another type of an airborne disease which sped, spreads like crazy. And especially with like, okay, cosmos, I pulled them out. Yep. Roses, I'm not, that's a huge investment. Mm -hmm. And the leaves will die off and drop and you have to crawl through your rose patch and get all of those leaves that can get into the soil. Yes. So um, if you have a really big garden, think about setting up like water hose that goes drip throughout irrigation. drip irrigation so right. that it just, otherwise, just take your time and water, water in the, 
top of the day first of all, so that the sun can dry any moisture off of the leaves if that so happens. Yep. But also really try to water just the roots of all your plants. Yes. And it can mean a bit of acrobatic work. Like yeah. I have to, I often am like lunging and diving over because I water yeah. with a hose. You should see my shin scabs from <laughs> roses. Oh, toads? Oh, I wish I had a bunch of toads. Toads and a are bunny fine. And all kinds of chickens and toads are totally fine. It I've means never, that you have a healthy ecosystem. Yeah. Um, if you want to keep it around, I'd put out a little patch of water yeah. to keep them hydrated. Um, but toads shouldn't be an issue. Toads wouldn't be an issue. Um, you want worms. Worms yep. um, are two part. Worms, um, when they use their washroom, uh, is good for the soil. And also it helps to aerate the soil because they're constantly moving around and breaking up the roots. Like they're, they're wonderful. So if you see um, worms in your garden, that's awesome. That's it means thing. it's a great, um, it's good dirt for them. And also it's gonna help with your plants. What I see a lot in the spring are grubs. Oh. Little tiny, they look like half moon shaped white and Maggot. they're kind of see-through, like they have a little bit of thin skin they're like you can see inside. disgusting. Get rid of those. We have a lot of questions about grubs mm -hmm. on the Facebook community. Um, and I have found quite a bit in mine. Yeah. Grubs are tough because you have to catch them. You can use nematoids to help eat the grubs, but you have to catch it early on in the season or later in the season. Yeah. Um, if you ever come out and your lawn is completely patched up and it looks like there's like brown gray spots yeah. everywhere it means that raccoons have been digging below the soil to try to get the grubs out because they eat them oh i didn't know that's why yeah yep. i think it's they're just yeah they're just a really tough pest i did a lot of um digging this spring and turning over the soil which helps when i'm turning over the soil and adding new compost in before planting that's when i find a bunch of them so one way that... I don't use chemicals or pesticides either yes. myself. I don't use anything. Um, so yeah, it can be really tricky. A lot of people in the community have been having good um, success with neem oil. Neem oil. Which okay. I personally have not used. I haven't either. And um, the best thing that I can tell you about pests is learn the cycle of the pests. Yeah. So it's called instar and there's usually like five phases from egg to maturity yeah and if you're really having a huge issue take 15 minutes sit with a coffee or a tea yeah and do a bit of research because you'll just learn the cycle and you will be able to apply that to your garden you know what i have a question um i didn't realize but a couple of my really beautiful rose bushes specifically the more expensive english of garden course. rose ones the blooms are fine but there looks like somebody has taken a hole punch. Perfectly round hole punch to all of the leaves. So it turns out there's a type of a bee called a leaf cutter bee. Okay, yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. cutting, Perfectly. I don't know how, honest to goodness, like they look, like I was like, who is like taking a hole punch? It is the most perfect circles every time, no ovals, perfect circles. And apparently they use them for their nests. Oh. I know, but never the flowers. So it looks super weird in the garden, but it's not causing any harm to the plant. They're not like eating all the leaves up. But yeah, it's super weird. I don't know if anyone else has those. So aphids, I have had, um, I've had a lot of them. This is the best what I have found. I have bought live ladybugs and have put the ladybugs in my garden and they eat them. Um, so when you're s s some garden centers yeah. have ladybugs for sale, yeah. they come and you put them in your refrigerator yeah, because I know. they stay dormant. Yeah. What they need when you release them are a few things. They, they don't like hot sun, so you release them at dawn or dusk. Okay and they need moisture because they, they come out of dormancy and they're thirsty, they're mm -hmm. hungry. So wet your garden, not the foliage, just wet your garden, have pockets of like moisture somewhere 
and then re I release them at night, like at about eight o'clock. Interesting. And a lot of them, like 30% of them flew away. I did it in two parts. Um, but and it helped? Absolutely. I took about a week and a half. See, I don't have and my aphid issues gone. that much with flowers as much. But I've heard of people doing that. Yep. So live ladybugs really, really, really help aphids if it's a big infestation. Yeah. Otherwise, what I, my best success is taking a hose and giving a strong blast of water on the stem. Yeah. Because what you're doing basically is when they fall off, they are falling into the soil and their like little body gets broken and they die in the soil. They won't come back up. It's like up. a whole movie of Die Hard. Yeah, so you just want to get them off manually. Yeah. Um, some people use a tiny, tiny bit of dish soap and spray. I've tried um, that with Helleborus. The Helleborus in the spring, if they're indoors, they do that too. They get aphids like crazy. And I've actually only once gotten rid of the infestation to the point that the plant has survived. Oh yeah. Yeah, but they got so bad almost every time. I'm wiping them off, yep. washing them off. I tried everything natural, cutting off all of the leaves that they're, you know, on. And but twice the plant has died, the third time it worked. Okay, so this is also a really good point too, is that the key to all of this infestation and pests and such is really being very present in your garden and observing things. Yeah. So trying to catch things before they become a full and too blown much moisture. That's infestation. what that was the issue with them both times with the Helleborus. I think they were waterlogged when I bought them. Okay. And that's where it that's where it spread. Yeah. Yeah. So um, keep your eyes open and and poke around and if there's holes on and things. And water in the morning. Look. We said yeah. that in another episode. It's really good to water in the morning because then the plants are drinking during the hottest parts of the day, but also the sun has time to get all the water droplets that might be on the foliage evaporated away. So you don't have a breeding ground, wet, moist area for mold and, and dead spots. And slugs. And slugs to be growing at night. We get a lot of questions about slugs. Um, the best method for me is two part. I come out at night. Slugs come out in the morning and yeah. at night. Yeah. Um, like your whole garden, if it was like a red, infrared, or you could see. Or if you could like slice it down the center and put a glass, piece yes. of glass. Yes, so much is going on oh, at yeah. night. It becomes a whole different thing. Yeah. Things are moving around and so for slugs, I come out with a flashlight and I hand pick them oh, that's... and I put them in like a soapy hot water or I put them on the concrete so the birds can eat them. And then the second best thing is I take like a small tuna can or something that is a bit short and round. I dig that whole can into the ground so the top is flush with the top of the soil and I fill it with beer. And slugs are really attracted to the beer and they go in and they drop in. So you just have to make beer. sure to keep changing that water or that beer too because once I had that, I put a couple little beer traps all over my garden. I went away for a while and I came back and they were like full of slugs and like so stinky and gross. So if you're gonna do that, make sure you are keeping on top of changing that beer That's up. like my fruit fly trap. The vinegar? I make the best fruit fly. No, I make a funnel. So I put peach cores, um, vinegar, wine, just I make like a little soup, but then I make a tiny, tiny paper funnel because they'll fly in and then they can't get out. It's way better than like the saran wrap poking the holes because it's yes. hard for them to find the holes. They fly into the funnel and then they can't get out. Yes, I do that I feel too. like I'd love to Instagram that, but 90% of the people who follow me would be like, that's disgusting. <laughs> I'm like, look what I made. Look at my science experiment. <gasps> oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Frank, Frank, we're coming over to meet your little deer friends. That's that is the so most beautiful cute. deer. I'm sure he's wanting to know how to like make sure they don't come in, but also like, let them in, they're so cute. Like sometimes the baby raccoons, I'm like, can I adopt one and can it become like my cute city pet? Or will its animal tendencies kick in? 
I don't know because some of them are so like I just want to snuggle them and if you have a pet raccoon please let give, us know give Shannon all of your tips <laughs> I'm just reading all these comments everyone's just like everybody's like it's beautiful leave them there yeah I don't think anyone is like Aw. how lucky someone was like how lucky you are we're in so their, sweet, I'm going to grow peas. Poor Jane's going to grow peas just to try to get the deers there. We're in their world. That's so beautiful. I want to live in the city yet have like a miniature farm. Yeah. And I feel like, like I would do it if it was fair to the animals. Yes. I would get a baby goat. I follow way too many goat websites. Baby goats are, I just, and they like, yeah, I just, I'm going to get upset. I really would like a baby goat. And like a baby bunny. I used to have a bunny. Okay, it is probably cabbage worms, um, which love the brassica family. So kale, broccoli, cauliflower. This is a very, very common pest in the vegetable garden. If you have little tiny holes on like your kale plants, um, it is looks like a caterpillar. Um, what you wanna look for is tiny tiny worms green they're like bright green mm -hmm. on the back of your leaf mm -hmm. and you want to look for their egg so their egg is kind of like white or yellowy and a little bit pokey and all you do is you gently squish the egg and you so you're killing There's a, a lot bunch. of murder in this episode but, uh, um and then if it's if they're really really rapid you want to hand pick them off if you can see them if they've gotten big. Otherwise, the best way to get rid of cabbage moth is to prevent it, of course, Yeah. with light row cover. So you cover your plants with a really light fabric mm -hmm. and then the cycle doesn't drop down By into the soil. By fabric, you don't, not like any kind of fabric. It's specific um, where the light and the water can come through. It's yep. like a really easy mesh covering. A lot of garden centers have it. Yep. Where you can always order it online. Yeah, it's I just called don't want to put someone um, putting like a flannel out. That's not gonna no. do much. <laughs> Good clarification. It's called row cover. Yeah. Um, or a lightweight um, shade cloth yeah. even could work. Yeah. Um, so the cabbage moths definitely hand pick those suckers off mm -hmm. and look for their eggs and squish the eggs before they the hatch. Cycle. Yeah. And check every morning. Like check a couple times a week for the yeah. eggs. Rabbits. Rabbits are tricky. They're the hardest to deter. They, um, yeah, if they've, if they've figured out where the food is, they'll get around what they don't want to be near, like the mothballs and stuff, to get at the food. They know. So the best thing to do then is to like cage um, or, or cover, unfortunately. Rabbits are, are smarter than squirrels and cuter. So they they just have like, I guess, more brain capacity. Like they, they know. Once they figured out where the food is, they'll go get it. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, yeah. Try what I would do is the following year, try plant in a different area of your garden. That might help. They might have forgotten over the winter. Um, but if they're gonna keep coming back, you need to cover it or cage it. And there, and like by cage, it's like quite narrow because they can get through very small spots. We covered a lot today. We covered a lot of yeah. topics today and maybe we didn't go as in depth as we could have, yeah. but we need to know what you guys wanna hear more yeah. about. So write us in the comments below. Let us know if there's something specific you want us to talk about and we or are so happy. more depth about certain slugs, pesticides, goats. Little goats. Little goats are so cute.